Once upon a time there was a fire. Right, uh, first of all, a little bit of background around um, the concept behind this. A couple of years ago, we hosted a couple of um, Q&A sessions at Conch Records for visiting um, DJs and producers. Quite often you do a radio interview and it's just you and the guest in the room. And it's quite cool because you just, you know, throw questions back and forth. But there's a certain kind of energy when you have a, um, an interview in front of a, an audience. It's not often people get the chance to kind of participate and experience a kind of artist conversation. So that's the idea behind doing these Portland Live sessions. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have Louis Baker as our first guest. So uh, thanks for making it up from Wellington and being here for this chat. Cheers for having me. Thanks very much. Okay, so um, I guess let's start at the beginning. So I remember doing the breakfast show at the time with Chip Matthews and getting the um, press release that Louis Baker from Wellington had been accepted into the Red Bull Music Academy. And I think maybe the next week we got you on the line for a chat to kind of find out who this guy from Wellington was yeah. who was um, heading off to. Um, where was the location for that Red Bull Music Academy for you? It was New York. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that was the first time you'd been to New York? First time I'd been overseas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge step, you know. Mm. Uh, up until that point, before you'd gone to New York, obviously uh, music is something you wanted to do, but did you think it would be something that you'd follow through with, or was it still like a, a passion but not so much of a serious career kind of um, option for you at that point? I was obsessed with cricket from quite a young sort of maybe age, maybe seven or eight, and, you know, hitting around balls with Dad and the backyard and hitting it over the fence and he'd go get it all that sort of thing anyway uh yeah and then uh guitar came in around about 13 and started to get really like involved with that and would wake up in the morning and play a lot and get home from school and play a lot so i didn't i didn't think it was going to be a you know like a lifelong career thing initially and then as soon as i fell into music as it were you know just felt more and more in it yeah. Uh, one thing I've always found with uh, knowing the people that have gone through um, Red Bull Music Academy, it really is a kind of launch pad and kind of lights the fire for them to follow through and, you know, doors start to open and, you know, using that experience as mm -hmm. really the motivation to follow through and make the most of, you know, I think if you've represented your country, whether it be in a sport or even if it's music, mm. you feel as though there's a certain um, expectation to do everyone else proud. Like, did you feel that kind of um, pressure going yeah. into it and coming out of it? Yeah, I felt, I felt a bit pressured going in. Um, but uh, I think what was cool was that um, I was listening, listening to a lot of wire hustle and... Um, you know, I was fond of other people who had already been through, so I was aware of the the academy and sort of how it worked and stuff. So I got to ask, you know, Mata TK and um, Dave and Miley and people like that um, how their experience was with it, and, you know, they were more than happy to kind of come back to me and say, bro, you, you know, don't go in too green, you know, make sure you got everything sorted, but it was fine in, in the end. And uh, looking back now, what, what do you think the one, the biggest thing you, you take away from that experience? I had a, an interview with MTV Korea over there, which is a bit, was a bit strange because I'd never really done a, an interview like that before, but um, I ended up saying that opportunity was the one thing that I would take away from this whole thing because it was it's just the people that you met and um, the opportunity of being in New York the opportunity of meeting new people, the opportunity of learning, you know, it's, that was the word that came to mind. So, yeah. And um, from that point on, we've seen quite a few releases from you and each time there's a new Louis Baker track, it shows like a different side of, of you as an artist. We've heard you over some kind of groove bass beats. Um, we've heard you featured on other releases. We've heard more of your kind of solo stuff. Is there a certain direction that you're going in with your music or are you just kind of um, just following different paths? Or? I guess I'm a sort of across that bridge when you get there sort of guy. I mean, there's always 
there's always kind of aspirations and dreams for me, but um, a lot of it's just down to feel and, you know, what feels right at the time and life's always changing, so it's sort of sometimes your strategies just go out the door and you totally forget about whatever. But, you know, I think it's good to have a plan and work from there. And if, you know, if something changes, then you can always deter from the plan, but at least having that is, is a good thing, you know. Tell us a little bit about how 2016 kind of worked out for you and, and what you really focused on. Well, February uh, 2016 did APRA Song Hubs here in Auckland, which was a bit of an eye-opener. Met some pretty interesting people there and um, wrote some songs throughout the week, which was a great opportunity to kind of just connect with people with like minds. And From there, I, I actually ended up meeting a lady called Lindy Robbins, and um, we just clicked well, I, I guess, as, as writers, you know, in the room. So we we sort of said to ourselves, oh, we should just write some more. So I went over to LA in May 2016 and wrote some more. And and from there, it just kind of, well, I went back in September, I think, um, and went to France, went to the castle, uh, the Chateau Marouet, all the songwriting retreat, pretty pretty swanky place. <laughs> and um, that was wicked. That was a wicked experience. So, so sort of, did some did some songwriting in some different places with some different people and 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 um, feel more educated as a result. So I guess when a lot of people imagine a songwriter going away to write some songs, they imagine locking themselves up in a cabin and just sitting there with a guitar and a notepad. You go into these places and you've got these songwriting workshops. How does that change or build on on your talents already? The the whole songwriting. Uh, camp, as they call it, is quite a different process to how I write songs, generally speaking. You know, like, it's, it's get in with whoever you're writing the song with and try and get that song finished in the day, you know. It's, it's about banging out ideas, you know, as much as you can and just sort of trying to, to get the melody or try and get the lyrics or whatever you're working on first, get that done first. For me, like, coming from a background of writing, uh, by myself in a room and um, it's completely different because you've got time you've got time to just sort of go through what it is that you like and what you don't like about a song and you're far more I'm far more critical as well like without other people going oh no that that idea is all right you should just keep going on that sort of thing as opposed to like nah that's a bad idea throw that out you know because that's what I'm like everybody everybody's different and when you're writing in that kind of environment, is that stuff that the songs you tend to carry on and develop further, or are they simply just uh, um, an exercise in writing? Oh, I think it's all about who who you're with. Like it's the people. So you find people who have a similar vision or a similar sort of you know way of looking at writing and what they want to get out of the song or whatever, and then it just clicks, you know. One day you might go and Dylan and, and write something which you don't like at all at the end of the day. <laughs> I've, I've had that before. And then you, you can go in and write something that you completely fall in love with. It depends on the people, it depends on, on, the, on the vibe. Cool. Now, um, just yesterday we were talking about the cycle, 2016 being the year in which you focused on the writing. 2017 is the year in which we you know, the audience is going to be hearing these songs in their finished form. You're going to be doing some more shows. Run us through um, what what you've got in store for us this year. Well, Gave It All Away has just been released today. One song, two versions. The whole idea behind um, these recent releases coming out was that it would, it's just sort of like four singles. Um, and this is the third of four. So there's one more to come out. Yeah, so the plan for the rest of the year is to sift through the rest of the songs that I wrote last year, which is around about 30 or thereabout songs, and try and figure out what works well with what and what feels right to me. Let's go back to one of the things you said. You've got um, the single that's out today. There's two versions. Mm. And you've done this before with um, Just Want to Thank You, where you had an acoustic version 
And then another version we'd gone into the studio with Jordan Rakai. That's right. Yeah. Um, similar to, to this single, tell us about the two versions which appear on the, um, on the seven inch. Cool, gave it all away. Is, uh, um, it's a song which I wrote in Burnley in the UK. I finished a show one night, came back to the hotel, wrote it in around about 20 minutes or thereabouts, which isn't normally like me. Uh, normally take quite a lot longer. Uh, and it sort of talks about, well, from my perspective, it's, it's about being at a fork in the road where you can either pursue and persevere with your dreams or sort of let it go. So um, gave it all away is all about pursuing your dreams. Yeah, so the first version of the two was produced by Moo, Fat Freddy's Drop, um, who I'm, I've always loved uh, and like listened to his music and obviously a huge fan of Freddy's. Uh, so for him to do that was like a big thing for me, you know, it's a good vibe. Yeah, and then there's the, the other version, which is basically an acoustic version. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thanks for the questions. Now, um, before we go, I just want to thank you, Louis, for taking time out to have a chat to us and give us a little bit of insight into how um, you operate within this kind of music world. Thank and, you, um, Yeah, thanks for your kind of, you know, your openness and your honesty. It's been great. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah. Cheers. This song is called Gave It All Away. Once upon a time there was a fire It brought so strong it brought so strong Lately patience has been somewhat of a stranger Believe me, I know It's not easy This is more than passion This is more than a game This is more than anything that I've ever made I need the satisfaction, power to the name To know I gave it everything before I gave it all Every day the desire rolls along like a river Could be me left shivering out in the cold It could be me left wondering when I get old This is more than passion This is more than a game This is more than anything That I've ever made I need the satisfaction Power to the name To know I gave it everything Before I gave all the way before I gave all the way gave it all the way oh. 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 gave it all 
you very much. Golden live sessions. Cheers.